What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from Brasserie de Schouf, and they are out of a Schouf, Belgium, and this is their Hublan Schouf. So they are calling this one a Belgian IPA beer, and underneath it says Al Brewed with three types of hops. It comes in at 9% alcohol by volume, 47 IBUs at the time of review. I don't know exactly how old this bottle is, but it does have a best before date of October 2023. We're about nine months away from that month, so we should be fine. So full disclosure, gotta be honest with you guys when I review these beers, but when it comes to Belgian beers, Belgian IPAs, one of my least favorite styles. Just throwing it out there. Just so you know up front what to expect when I review this beer. Um, there's a chance I might enjoy it. There's a chance I might not, but I want to be honest with you. Um, last time I had this beer was many years ago, and I did not care for it, but again, not a huge Belgian IPA guy. And the last time I had this, I wasn't a huge IPA guy in general. Just started to get into it. So it's been a very, very long time since I've had this beer. So this is going to be fun for my palate to kind of figure out if I enjoy this one. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy it a little bit more than I did the previous time I had it, which, again, we're talking at least at least eight years ago, if not closer to 10. So just, just throwing it out there. So anyway, uh, the three types of hops they're using in this, they don't tell you, but it's Tomahawk, Saz, and Amarillo. Uh, Amarillo. And uh, that's all I know about it. Uh, they do have a spiel on the back that I will read if I remember at the end. Uh, I don't think it really talks too much about tasting notes, but don't really need to read it right now. Anyway, let's give it a pour here. So Belgian IPAs, like, like I mentioned before, when it comes to lighter Belgian beers in general, they're not my favorite. I like darker Belgian beers. So then you threw in like, you know, the hop character uh, in conjunction with the Belgian, uh, you know, flavor profile. And it was just like, not my jam back in the day. I don't really seek out and haven't, um, you know, when it comes to the Belgian IPA style. But anyway, can't see it that well in the glass. I'm using this glass because it's hashtag proper glassware because it came with the Discovery gift pack. Uh, but it's tough to see. But down at the bottom here, you have this really nice like golden uh, yellow color. Yeah, looks beautiful. Looks like a lighter, you know, it's lighter, like a golden yellow down here as it goes up. It's more orange, um, you know, murky. Can't really see through. It has about two and a half finger of the soap sudsy look of head. Some decent alcohol legs at 9%. Yeah, I mean, it looks kind of what you expect from like a lighter Belgian beer. Uh, even though it's 9%, but I'm just saying lighter color Belgian beer. Anyway, let's get those. So there's a huge head here. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of hop character. There's like a little bit of an orange probably from the Amarillo. Yeah, there's an orange, almost slight, earthy, resinous kind of like, I wouldn't say necessarily pine. Maybe like a spruce, like a spruce tip kind of nose. But underneath that's all that Belgian goodness, um, you know, you get from the yeast ester. There's a little bit of like a uh, bubble gum. I was going to say banana, bubble gum. A little bit of like a uh, coriander, almost like pepper kind of note from the uh, yeast as well. There's a sweet candy profile as well. Like maybe like a sweet orange, sweet lemon, pear. This actually smells pretty solid. Um, it's certainly not offensive to my palate. Now, maybe 10 years ago, this was offensive. It's certainly not offensive to my palate this, in this day and age. Yeah, it just kind of smells like a slightly more hop forward, like Belgian Trapel or Belgian Strong Pale, which I assume a Belgian IPA like this pretty much. I mean, it's probably, it says IPA triple beer. So I guess it's like a Belgian Trapel, but like hop four. And I totally get that. A little bit of like a wheat sensation as well. Touch of vanilla. Yeah, smells pretty solid. Let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Yeah. So... I don't dislike this, but this is definitely not exactly my wheelhouse. <laughs> we'll just say that. It's everything you get with a Belgian Strong Pale or a Belgian Trapel, but it just has, what it's adding to this beer is not necessarily to me like a ton of flavor. It's more of like just a firm bitterness, which is fine, but I feel like I don't need a Belgian Trapel or a Belgian Strong Pale to be like overly bitter. And that's kind of what this is, like a moderate bitterness. Body and this is like medium touch over medium, maybe a little bit thin for 9%, but I think it adds to the drinkability, so I'm okay with it. Mouthfeel, a lot of carbonation. This is moderately, maybe a moderately to full carbonated. To my value, this has a little bit more carbonation than even uh, La Chouf. So it's effervescent. It's, it's definitely dances on the tongue. 
very prickly. So big carbonation. The taste, like again, it's like it's like Le Chouf to some degree, or again, like a Belgian Trapel, but just I mean, Le Chouf is technically, I think, a Belgian Trapel in the base, but since they brew it with coriander, they call it like a Belgian strong pal. So it's like you took Le Chouf and you just hopped it with tomahawk, saz, and amarillo, and this is what you get. And it's not bad. I mean, this is a bigger, a little bigger beer because it's 9% as opposed to 8, but this isn't bad per se, like I, this is not like a poorly brewed beer or anything. It's just to my palate, this is would it go to, if I'm like in my local bottle shop and I'm shopping for a Belgian beer, I'm in the, down the Belgian aisle or on the Belgian shelf, Belgian IPAs are not the first thing I'm going to grab. But forefront, orange, lemon, definitely has that like hop character that's more to the citrus side of things. Um, there's an underlying like sweeter kind of wheat malt sensation dies underneath the palate. But that 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 citrus at the front becomes a little bit candied with a sweeter kind of feel. But as it passes through, I'm hit with more of like a, a lighter, whiter fruit, like a pear or an apple, like a red apple core. Maybe more of a pear, maybe kiwi even. Continues on through. Slight bubblegum yeast ester. Definitely not as big as in the nose, but it's noticeable. And then the finisher is a mix to me of like coriander white pepper, but then also like a floral, slightly piney, spruce tippy kind of resinous hop tone. I'd say it's honestly, it's more like earthy and floral than pine. Finishes semi-dry, but it finishes with a moderate bitterness. I'd imagine this is relatively fresh too. I don't know how, how many, you know, how many, um, once they, like, do they give two or three years for this? If they just give, like, a single year, you're talking about, like, a three-month-old Belgian IPA, and I think it tastes like something that's relatively fresh. Could be a bit older, but it's pretty fresh because those hops are still uh, quite bitter, and, and, again, I think they're producing that orange-lemon kind of uh, note at the front of the palate as well. Um, I will say 9%, a little bit of warming in the chest, no assurance on the palate, so it hides the, uh, it hides the, the alcohol quite well. But... For me, again, and you always got to be honest, and I'm still, to this day, there's still, you know, styles that just don't resonate with me, but I still try them. I still try to give them an honest, fair review to what I'm tasting. I would say, though, as far as, like, quality, I can tell this is a quality Belgian IPA. Like, it's, 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 it's good for a Belgian IPA. So I think stylistically, like, I would give this probably at least a four out of five. I think it's well made. I just think when you combine, I don't like lighter, Belgian beers, lighter color Belgian beers, and then you throw, uh, you know, tomahawk saws and amarillo on top of that, and it's just giving me like this generic floral, earthy kind of bitterness on the back end, and a little bit of like citrus character. It doesn't really enhance the beer for me per se because I'm not a fan of the style. So, gotta gotta keep it one hundo as you do. And again, four out of five for the style, but like it's, it's gonna get substantially lower for my personal preference. So, not a bad beer. Highs the alcohol well. I could drink it. Like this isn't a drain pour in the least. Like it's 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 okay. It's just, am I ever gonna buy this beer again? Not on my own accord for my own enjoyment. Just won't do it. Um, and that goes for most Belgian IPAs. Just not something I dig. And if you're out there and you're watching this and you're like, man, I love Belgian IPAs, then you probably do dig this one and others. And and that's cool. That's that's the beauty of craft beer. So uh, we're gonna pour the rest in here, see if it changes. You know, the goodies at the bottom. If there's anything going on, probably haze the beer up a little bit, and that'll be about it. But you know, I gave it a fair shake, and uh, still not a beer that is for me. Ooh, every time I throw that in, there's a little bit of that yeast sediment. I was getting more pronounced like yeast ester. Uh, the phenols from the yeast also kick in. I just got like more of like a coriander sharpness, which is all right with me. Um, so Hublon Schuf from um, Brasserie de Schuf. I have to give this a fair and honest score. And again, I don't hate this. It's not bad. It's just not for me. So I'm going to give this a uh, 3.25 out of 5. It's the best I can do on this beer. Um, that's kind of where it lands for me. Typically anything under a uh, 3.5 is something that I would prefer would never buy again and prefer not to drink like if i was you know are any of my friends gonna have a party or i'm gonna be at a cookout and they're just gonna have this hanging out probably not but let's say i was would if someone handed me a bottle and say hey i'd probably drink it like i would have no issues with it i don't hate it i don't dislike it it's just it's not a style i'm ever gonna actively seek out so anyway price point availability uh 
I got this in the Discovery uh, gift pack, which came with four beers. This was one of them, and this glass is $18. But I think if you can buy these in four packs, pretty sure you can. It's probably like $12 to $14 four pack, which is fine. I'm talking 9%, and uh, you know, four bottles of it for like three, three fifty dollars a bottle, like that's fine. That's a good price point. Availability, wherever you see uh, Brasserie, the Schuf, uh, if you see Le Schuf and Mick Schuf and the whole nine, you probably should see these. If you have a good uh, local beer store that has an import section, it's certainly you go to the Belgian section, you probably should see this. If not others from uh, the Schuf, because, you know, that's, they're Belgian and that's where they go. You know, you learn something every, uh, learn something new every day. And what you came here to learn today was that this is a Belgian beer. And if you go to your local beer store and there's a Belgian section, this will be in the Belgian section. What is wrong with me? Anyway, if you've had this one before, post in the comment section. Let me know what you think about it. Do you like Belgian IPAs? Uh, if you do, post in the comment section. Let me know. If you don't, do the same. I'd love to hear feedback on, you know, what's your what's your least favorite style? What's, something, what's a style you don't seek out? Or what are styles you'll buy without question? Um, like I said, Belgian IPAs, I don't care who produces one. I'm never probably going to go out of my way to, even if like Hot Butcher or other half or somebody put out a Belgian IPA, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna just, I might try it, but I would never go out of my way to go, you know, get a four pack of it or go, go crazy over it. Just, it's not a style that resonates with me and that's fine. There are, there are probably hundred plus styles and sub styles at this point. So, you know, there's, there's styles out there for everybody, but there's also styles out there that certain folks don't like. This is one of them. So appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol to the next one. Cheers.